Hello, hopefully that's as live, fingers crossed. Um yeah, it looks like looks like I managed it. Uh sorry if you accidentally got onto a totally different stream than this one. The internet is playing daftness, but here I am. Happy Sunday. Thank you for joining me, my crafty clan. Um yeah. Hope you've all had an awesome week and today we're on to Maker's subscription box again and this time it is the Sea Otter. Can you see that? Can you see it? Sea Otter and Baby. I'm looking forward to this one. I'm looking forward to them all. Always fun. Uh, yeah, this should be cool. Um, yeah, if you can just let me know in the chat if we are actually live. I think everything's working. It, it looks maybe good, possibly. Yep, let me know if it's working or I'm just talking to myself and then we will get started in a couple of minutes. Um, yay! <laughs> Fingers crossed it's going to the right place. Um, yeah, possibly. Looks kind of good. <laughs> um, and yep, yeah, thanks for the link. Makers are here. This is the monthly subscription box from the Makers. If if you're new here or you haven't seen before, this is subscription you can sign up for and every month they send a new project through your door, um, which is cool and exciting and a bit of a challenge to try different things, you will see. And my shelf of stuff, I've got several of the old projects, old kits that we've made, and you can have a look through my old videos and you'll see other ones you can felt along with me. Um, but yeah, I think they're great fun. Okay, let's let's put the two cameras on. Let's let's come down and look at those bucks. Um, because apparently you can see me and hear me, so that's awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Right. I think we've got a few people in the house, so time to open and see what's inside the box. <clears throat> so. A little bit longer for those of you that missed. Um, I missed my postman, to be honest, and then I couldn't get try to get to the post office, and the post office is on limited hours, totally understandable. So I had to arrange a redelivery. So I finally got my box. Let's dive in. And um, yeah, before we open, is anyone else? I know the makers are felting along with me. Is anyone else felting, or have you already made your your otter for the month? Here we have cool. Um, we have our newsletter for September. It's getting a bit dark. Um, lovely. This fairy box is an autumn sprite. This is our sea otter and next month's wolf. I'm looking forward to wolf. Um, they've. If you've missed, you should pop over to the Makers channel. They've been doing witches and wizards this past week or so. Uh, yeah, loads of cool, cool things here. And a little tutorial on how to make bird's legs from wire. Always handy little cool fun things in these, in these newsletters. Um, into the box we go. <laughs> I actually ordered that. I'm so impressed with the packaging here. I ordered myself some tissue paper because I just love this moment. Got it in purple, of course. But here we go. And then the Maker's Box newsletter, the Sea Otter's instructions, and my bag. And we've got eyes and our free sample of wool. Let's get that out of the way and see what we've got wool-wise. French country sheep natural wool tops. That is so soft. That is quite silky. Though it looks coarse, it's really silky. That's lovely. And it smells sheepy. That's very cool. I like that a lot. Um, can be ideal to create feathery look on birds, especially robins. Oh yeah, it's a nice robin colour. That's cool. Next. And here's here's our bag. Let's see what we've got in here. Oh, we've got. I wasn't sure if we were getting that. We've got some blue and stuff to do the the watery surroundings. Look at the bigger picture to do our watery surroundings. That's really cool. I love this. I love the whole setup of this kit. Because did you know sea otters fall asleep holding hands so they don't drift apart, and they have little pockets in their armpits for keeping their favourite stones in. Isn't nature wonderful? Right, this is a gorgeous blue. That is really nice. Um, 
yeah it's a little brighter than it shows on camera but it's a really nice blue and then <laughs> my guilty pleasure then we have really nice brown a little bit of just off white I should read read the instructions and see what we've got but I like just pulling them all out and that's a really nice dark brown with it's, it's got more colour variation in it and this is just a solid dark brown and these are two lighter browns both with lots of variation of colour in I'll figure out what all these are in a minute oh yes and we also have our our eyes our little pack of eyes i think that's everything in the box um let's check the the second newsletter of the day um lovely little little thing talking about the sea otters we've got looking forward to the wolf i think i've only ever done one tried to do one once with a howly mouth so i'm looking forward to that oh and we've got getting told what's coming next so we know it's wolf next month then it's a badger in november i love badgers fun to make as well and december's curled up cats uh yeah awesome oh excuse me poking at my eyes i stupidly thought hay fever season was over and stopped taking my antihistamines don't do that okay so what do we have we have the two big ones are south german merino in grey dark brown milk sheep uh dark grey brown country sheep uh, um dark chocolate new zealand water blue and cream fox sheep <laughs> cool that's interesting um yee. cool good start right i'll check the chat and then we'll get diving in oh and rubbing my eyeballs sorry if you hate people rubbing their eyeballs just put a post-it note over that bit of the screen um <laughs> the makers will pam use all the wool you can use core wool for the inside of the body ah cool yes i do have big chunks of core wool lying about um lanolin core wool is my favorite i'm using it right now um i think I have some more messy core than normal, but yeah, this is a. I think this is your lanolin stuff left over from another project. I don't keep a label of it, but anyway, it's a good core wool, so I'll do that. Um, uh, Helen's not made her otter yet. Um, but yeah everyone that I have used the lanolin rich core wool in other projects and it does felt really nicely uh, Wendy good morning uh, kiss my stained glass hello there um, yeah okay shall we shall we have a peek at what's inside and get started with this I'm intrigued and we have brilliant so here's an idea of the size we're going to get which is cool um put all of the grey south german merino this was uh, grey south german this was the big chunk and the blue water to the side this is to make the rocks and stuff that's cool that's to to do all the backgrounds i love that that's so much fun um of the remaining set aside a pinch of each color for finishing touches okay pinch of each color i can do that See, I'm reading ahead and following instead of just right diving straight in, which I normally do. So, I really love this brown colour. This is awesome. Um, okay, the milk sheep, the light, the dark brown with lighter hairs running through it. Divide this wool into two piles, one for each adult otter divided can do uh, the country sheep the grey brown springy wool uh, which the grey brown country sheep that's the little one yep this is the one I had picked up take a big pinch for the baby otter and divide the rest into two for the two adults done <laughs> 
um, and the dark chocolate. Have I done this right? Dark chocolate. No, I have. Yes, I. I'm confusing myself now. I've got too many. Of. Yeah, that was the dark chocolate. Yeah. Okay. I'm wrong. This is this is the this is the first one. The dark brown with the lighter hairs. I'm an idiot. So, a pinch. Um. I divide this into two piles. Yeah. Got it. Done it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay, so this is the dark chocolate. Take a wisp for the adult's noses and the rest is for the baby. That's cool. So the baby's going to be darker, which it is. Yeah, kind of got it. I have piles of wool everywhere now. <laughs> oh, and the the cream. Where did I put the cream? Uh, here it is. Um, take a wisp for the baby. Wisp for the baby. Divide between the two adults. Okay. Oh, I love this. Choose your otter. Right, guys, you're going to have to help me choose an otter. Um, for So we can do a sea otter with a distinctive light-coloured head and diamond-shaped nose. Fo follow the main instructions. Or if you prefer the common Eurasian otter, follow the main instructions, but look out for the text given in blue. Oh, guys, okay. So let me know if you want me to do... A Pacific Sea Otter or a Eurasian Otter? Let me know in the comments over over there, probably, or down there, wherever they are. I'll give you a minute, I'll check the chat, and then we'll get started. I'm excited and nervous. Um, who have we, what else have we got? Um, <laughs> the makers, you get plenty of wool in the kit, but Pam loves to use tons. Yeah, guilty, guilty. Um... And if you use core, you can be cheeky and make more otters. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I have. I always have tons of core. I always have tons of wool with little bits of other things in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Diana, yeah, good, cool. You're using the core wool. Then I can make a European otter as well. Maybe even two. Yes. <laughs> um <laughs> makers thank you you're not an idiot there are lots of yummy wool browns you just have to pay attention absolutely i was just racing ahead the instructions are clear i just was racing ahead going yeah it's that got it yep um oh the maker the pacific ones the one with the pockets that floats and holds hands our british one doesn't oh um i believe yeah was it otters no it was Seals, I think. My sister swam with one by accident once. It might have been an otter. It was so far away. But she was in the water swimming. And myself, my mum and my dad were on the beach and watching. And then behind her, a little head came up. And we were like, don't, don't look behind you. But every time she looks behind her, it dived down and hid under the water and whenever she faced us it popped up and so it was playing with her so she never saw that she was swimming with it but we all saw she was <laughs> right nobody got any choices whether i should do the the pacific or the eurasian i am um, okay we'll go with the we'll go with the normal one um because yes the pacific one's the one with the pockets so we'll do that um and i will because i'm guilty of using too much wool we'll use some core wool um so i want to roll it up and i'm aiming for this kind of shape that we've got in the picture so i'm going to roll some core wool just to get a little starter that's not bad because we're going to cover it now i've put wool all over my needles where where did i put my needles there we go um so i'm just gonna felt that slightly to get it going and then we'll dive in to brown and it's the big one i'll move move some of the stuff aside because <laughs> i'm running out of space okay so we've got to put some of that aside anyway. So that 
should be enough to make this into the size we want and probably bigger <laughs> now with me okay and when i check that yep that's going to be pretty good um okay stabby stabby and now i can check check chatty so we've got a a really cool brown looking tube <laughs> Oh, Wendy's asking for the Pacific as well. So yeah, we're we're doing we're doing the Pacific otter. So remind me, I've just got to keep looking for the black text and ignore the blue. Um, okay, I'll leave one end a bit fluffy for attaching the head. So this will be the head end, and we'll just felt the body nice and firmly so this i wasn't sure what size these were going to be so these are going to be quite big i thought they were going to be like like titchy tiny so this is cool it means there'll be more room for details on the baby as well but i think we'll just do one adult today and maybe do the baby next week we'll see what's happening see see how you guys feel as well and i'm using my three needle tool look at me being good <laughs> much easier because it just felt nice and quick but it's really i really enjoy it for pieces this size and for the bodies of my little dogs my dog like what i make tends to be like really really little so i need to go to a single needle when i'm doing the doing like the legs or anything a bit fiddly but this is really good to get everything started get it a bit firmer um but i probably won't go too crazy with this because it's a big what level did they say this was beginners level yes skill level beginners and they'll be about 25 centimeters long so it's a biggie um yep the makers the blue um three needle tool speeds it up it does indeed because for every one stab i'm getting three stabs <laughs> and they're all nicely close together once you figure out how to fit all the needles into the tool it is it is tricky to get all the needles because they're so close together but once i got that working then yep absolutely it works great and yeah it just speeds everything up like you say um <laughs> you've got a more fancy one you got it after i struggled loading this one <laughs> Oh, but it, it's like I, I'm the idiot tester. <laughs> if Pam can mess it up, you know, if Pam can manage it, then anyone can manage it. If Pam messes it up, we need new things. <laughs> oh, it's it's Alicia on the on the makers chat. Cool. <laughs> because there's a there's a few of you guys in that account, so I'm never sure who's who. <laughs> we've got a body for me that's not bad with the size that's pretty good um i won't go any firmer with that um country sheet yeah, country sheep is the gray brown one okay i'm trying to figure this out Take one of your adult piles of the great brown one. This was this country sheep. Grey brown springy wool looks good to me. Yes. <laughs> um roll it up, aiming for an oval, going for the template. Yeah, that looks about the perfect amount. Okay. Figuring it out. <laughs> Wendy, you haven't been on in forever. I missed watching you. Oh, I, I had a, I've had other friends tell me they've not been getting notifications for me. I've, I've been on <laughs> every. I've not missed a Sunday in ages, and had two videos this week. But I think, um, what happens? It, it's right. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of of YouTube um theory with you. Um, what happens because my friend um, Brian G had asked us to do the what you would do for a million views on YouTube type video um, I thought that would be fun for a slightly different video to make but obviously as most people 
who've subscribed to me are more interested in selling on Etsy or needle felting. What happens is if I put up a video that more people are not all that interested in, if people don't watch it, you know, if the first people that YouTube show it to don't watch it, then YouTube goes, oh, well, other people aren't interested in, and they don't show it to the rest of you. So people don't get to see it. And then my next videos, they show to less people. So you don't get warnings that I'm going live or you don't get, um, you don't get notifications that I've put up a video. So yeah, I thought that was the case. My views are down a whole load. And some of my friends said they hadn't got notifications of the lives and stuff. So yes, um, YouTube is is punishing me for making videos that people didn't want to watch. Um, I will say, if you are interested in YouTube, um, hopefully they are the, the 1 million. I made three videos about 1 million views on YouTube. Firstly, talking about how I did it to get 1 million views on YouTube, and then why I don't want 1 million views per video. And then I did a case study on a really cool YouTube channel that I watch. Um, it's not needle felting. It's not selling on Etsy. It's about a parkour team. It's a very strange thing, but they're very good and I enjoyed them. So if you're interested in that, give them a watch. But if not, I have still been making videos. Check when you're finished here, go to my channel page. Um, just click on my name on YouTube. Go to my channel page and uh, look at videos and see if you missed out on anything. Um, I did I have made a few videos, but yes, I did notice that YouTube's been showing me less so i'm still here um yeah. alicia yeah i could have used core wool first on the head yes but i'm only making one just now on the baby so i'm i'm fine i'll have plenty of stuff left <laughs> diana they need labels the makers <laughs> yeah yes they need to a way of well unfortunately the way youtube works if you're in the maker's youtube channel then it will just say the maker's name there's no way to sort of change the name they just have to let us know who it is um wendy you've been doing stuff on sundays and i haven't haven't had service oh well it's good to see you anyway um Bridget, I don't get notifications either and I can never find the notifications on Facebook events. Yeah, Facebook's really bad. Um, f uh, for anyone who's in the E-Rank group, I do, I do lives in that Facebook group and it's so difficult to, to let people know that you're just about to go live. It is a little easier on YouTube because I get a link that I can post in the Facebook group or the lovely Alicia Alicia did that for me today um you can you can post links but with Facebook it's like people I'm gonna go live but just keep an eye out <laughs> kind of thing yeah Facebook's really bad um oh Bridget you watched the YouTube cool thank you <laughs> and Helen's felting along ah oh, that's great <laughs> Bridget your otter has a big head that happens to my felties all the time so I'm kind of glad to have this this template to work on um yeah my dogs have spent many years being big-headed dogs and i've just got to get the balance right with them just having a big enough head that it looks kind of cute but not so much that it goes really bizarre i think we've got the right size here um Oh, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> if I was doing the Eurasian otter, then the slight, slight differences here. But um, so felt the top of the head and nose. Scope a sh oh a smooth curve from the top of the head to the nose. Okay, I think that's actually looking fairly similar. I'm kind of happy with that so far. Um, Diana's on her on her second daughter with me. Cool. <laughs> I, that was so cool. Like people just all felting together. Um, if I could find out a decent way to do it, we we should have like a little a little call where you could all jump in and show me what you're up to as well. But I'm not I'm not so technologically advanced. I could probably do it, but I'd need people helping me, <laughs> letting people in and out of the stream. But that would be fun. Well. Do you, how do you guys feel about that? See, my juice. Uh, we could try that one day. 
if anyone wanted to be able to come on and say hello here's my otter here's where I'm at <laughs> Just going to make this a little tiny bit firmer, but I don't want to go too much because I know most when well, I know most of you aren't beginners now. Um, you're but well, most of you here have been felting for a while, but a lot of people wanting the subscription box will be beginners, and when you're just starting out, you don't felt super firmly. Um, you just want to get the shape done. I totally, I same here. <laughs> Um, so you would tend to felt a little bit softer, but this even so, I mean, it's holding its shape really nice, so that's cool. Okay, so I've got to spread out the fibers for the head. We're gonna pop his head in that. That looks about the same as the picture. Um, felt to attach. Let's get it attached and then I think yeah we're gonna blend in some of the grey yes um gonna blend in some of the grey to his neck in a bit but I'll get it attached first of all um Alicia, yeah, we could schedule a Zoom. Yeah, I've done I've done lots of of Zoom Zoom meetings for for private things. I haven't figured out how I can do Zoom onto YouTube because I would totally totally like to support you guys and and me by letting other people be able to join and watch and things. Um, I totally I I totally know how to do Zoom. <laughs> um, have been doing that, but I don't know how to attach it and and stream with zoom if that makes sense um faith hello there you're not late we were just sitting waiting for you no well i just have <laughs> a very bizarre shape there will there will become an otter i have faith i totally i totally believe this will work out okay a little more of this this color to blend from his neck down into his body. Just so there's no hard lines, because there ain't no hard lines in nature, so a little bit of blending's good. And also if you're doing a join like this, just felting with your needle down this way can bring some fibres down um, to make things look more natural, or you can use a reverse felting needle, which helps to pull out fibres of one colour and draw them across the other. That super helps too. Um, but yeah, just laying a little bit over and letting the wispy ends come down helps also. Just gives a bit of a blend so it's not all a solid line. Just want to get this a little bit firmer. Actually, there's something about it that does almost kind of look ottery already which is cool um and other ways it just looks like a bizarre log but i i see something ottery um yum. But yeah, um, Alicia, by the way, yeah, talking about Zoom, I'm happy to jump on a Zoom, you know, happy to hang out anytime. I just, oh, I don't know if I'm, I'm the only one. I can't be the only one. I'm just finding I am not getting as much done in a day as I'd want to. I just seem to run out of time constantly. Um... Uh, the make uh, Alicia saying I found going around squeezing all the makes from the boxes that we tend to felt much harder than the kits, so that's a reason we use more wool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean these these kits are lovely like projects for beginners and stuff. But if you've been felting for a while, you do tend tend to start felting a bit firmer. So I totally understand they're they're designed to come together nice and quickly because that's more encouraging for you. Like. 
most people when they're just starting out don't want to spend like 10 hours making one little project they want to see something like in half an hour they have a they have a thing <laughs> a face yes uh, the the big old brown foot yes i have a big old brown foot it will it will become an otter i i trust <laughs> Oh, Alicia, you've got a link for how to zoom onto YouTube. I will check that out later. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm just learning so many different things because th this this setup I have is with Streamlabs OBS, which I've been using for a few years now. So it's pretty easy. Um, I've also been using um, Be Live for the Facebook Lives. Um, where you can bring in guests. I don't know how you bring in guests to Streamlab, Streamlab. So Be Live, I've been bringing in guests, which is cool. Um, and I've done Streamyards, which again is good, good for guests. But I can't do all this multi-camera setup. And there's whole loads on the Streamlabs OBS. There's whole loads of other fancy things I can do, screen transitions. And I think. If anyone hasn't subscribed, if you want to subscribe, we should hopefully see a zombie. A zombie go across the screen somewhere about there if someone subscribes when we're live. Um, so, yeah, if if someone can give us subscribe, but you can set up silly things like that. Um, I think you can pull up if people like your video, even it'll show up. I'll have to figure that out as well. But I think I've just got the subscribe one set up. Carol, hello there. Um, oh, Faith, you're tempted to get the otter set. I had to miss it at the beginning of the month. Now I'm feeling like I missed out. Oh, well, we'll see how this turns out, but it's looking cute. So I think it's it's going to be a nice, and it's a fairly easy, so far at the size and the simple shapes, which is such a good way to make things, just breaking it down to simple shapes. Um, but with with that kind of thing, it's it's the kind of little project you can just sit back and you stick a movie on and not really think about it too much because it's coming together pretty easily. And so far, famous last words, but the this tool, because of how the needles are held in it, I can't even go through far enough to stab myself. So there's, there's no danger. You can just sit back. <laughs> um... Take a pinch of the cream fox and lay it over the face. Oh, I like this. Yeah, so we're blending out. So it's going to be denser colour in the centre and we're blending out to a lighter colour. Gotcha. Here we go. <laughs> Alicia, someone subscribe. I want to see <laughs> I See, it's no bad thing that you're all subscribed so you can't you can't subscribe again. <laughs> um, Bridget, yes, yeah, Saint of Faith. Um, don't worry, you can probably make one. I haven't got my kit yet, but I made one out of the core wool and dragon mix. Yep, yeah, you can practice. I'm, I'm sure... Um, You've, you've had quite a few kits, so like me, you've probably got a big basket of random wool <laughs> kicking about everywhere. But this does seem like a fun a fun little project. They all are. Um, but yeah, I didn't realise it was going to be so big, else I might have decided to do it at like half size or something. But no, it's, it's working. Okay. Sea otters have diamond shaped noses. I'm just going to use a single needle for this. Take a little wisp of the dark chocolate and roll it into a loose ball. Lay it on the end of the nose. Oh, there we go. Somebody did something. <laughs> I heard something. Um, did, did the zombie... I wasn't looking at the screen. Did we get the zombie? <laughs> oh, don't say I, like, bigged up the zombie and then it's gone away. Um... Okay, so we want a diamond shaped nose. Well, let's see how good I can manage this. <laughs> Do 
just sticking the nose at sorry for putting my head in screen again I really need to figure out how not to do that but just putting the nose on something does make them extra cute I did not know they had a diamond shaped nose how adorable yeah. oh Carol you've pulled your back so was resting and snoozing oh you poor thing that doesn't sound fun and Steffi's in the chat. Hello there. Um, not stopping, been listening while driving back home um, from Peterborough. <laughs> now arrived and need a cuppa. Spend time with the family. Absolutely, yes. Um, yeah, take it easy. Um, thanks, Pam and everyone, for your support. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you for dropping in. Good to see you. Um, oh, no, so what happened to my zombies? That is totally supposed to be there, right? Yeah, my zombie's supposed to be there. Uh, oh. Hang on, hang on, let me... Can I try... Ooh, what did I do? That's not fair, it's saying I can test the widgets. Um, oh. I'll have to... I'll have to figure that out later. Oh, that's a pain, because he showed up a couple of weeks ago. had a little zombie in the top left of the screen. Where did my zombie go? <laughs> just want to get this nose a little more pointy, diamondy. Yeah. And yeah, poor Carol, just rest in DD. Want some more, more stabby needle. Get a bit more stabbing done. looking cute. Uh, divide your remaining milk sheep wool. The milk sheep was the brown. The, the, yeah. <laughs> yes, the milk sheep was this this one. Um, and I want to do similar for the paws and then slightly bigger for the tail. Okay. It's about right for pause. So anyone went to you when you felt something down, um it's going to felt to about as hard as you can scrunch it down so you can get an idea of what volume something's going to be by just scrunching it down um first for the pause and then we'll take that would be the tail okay um Fold it in half and then roll it from left to right. Got it, yes, I remember how you do pause. So you've got a kind of flatter edge for the ball. Nice quick way to do it. Um, Alicia, yeah, your favourite needle is a 42 twisted, which is this one. I uh, don't know if you can see it, but it's a twist. Very fine. Um, they are super good, but they're really fine, so everything has to be a little firmer felted. If you try and hit it in just like a pile of core wool, if you try to start with that, not good, but really good for detail. Um, but yes, they are cool. Um, for anyone just starting out, Literally, it's a good idea to get a few different needles in a few different sizes and play around with them until you figure out which ones are your favourites because everyone's going to be slightly different. 
Um, I know, I know for sure the needles I use now are different from the ones that I started with, and I go through phases. Sometimes I'll get really fine needles, and I really like that. Other times, like this, is a little more coarse. Um, I think this is a thirty-six you can probably see the barbs 36 or a 38 but the different types of fiber just felt in a different different way so some of them felt down really quickly with a nice coarse needle so yeah just order a bunch i mean needles are not expensive for everything that you're going to spend on any other craft felting needles are not expensive so don't skimp get yourself a few different ones see what you like best because it's so much quicker if you use the right needle on the right kind of fleece things come together so much quicker i started literally i had um everyone who felt will cringe i had um merino tops to start with and that's all i had and i did great out of it i did some really good work but oh, it takes so much longer to make any kind of a shape it was just a bit of a nightmare um yeah so it's about one gram of this brown for each paw and about one one and a half grams for the tail um yeah i'm terrible at weights but this is kind of, i i cheated and just squidged it and said yep that's about the right size so that works for me <laughs> um Oh, Helen, your Wi-Fi is on the blink again. Oh, that's a pain. I hate that when that happens. Um, oh, um, Alicia, yeah, a mega mix, one of each. I'm assuming that's a different types of, of needles. You've got a, a mega mix pack. <laughs> oh, and you can win the mega mix pack this Tuesday live on YouTube with Steffi. Awesome. And Thursday, Thursday at Facebook. Cool. Well, there you go, guys, if you want to win win something dive in dive in there um you can subscribe to the the makers through the, their channel is the name that alicia's living under just now so the makers with a double s and yeah you can join in and win stuff far more generous than me you get nothing from me <laughs> little bird blythe hello there good to see you hope you're all having a good weekend yeah not bad at all uh this project looks interesting yeah i should i'll bring him back into view yes we are attempting to make a an otter today um and then next week we might come back and make the make the baby i think the baby should come together nice and quickly um diana yeah been there done that tops take ages i've got lots to use up well i use the tops um I don't I only have a shaggy dog just now, but I use the tops for making the long hair on dogs. Um, works really nicely. You can make it have sort of different textures and stuff. But yeah, tops works really nicely for making long hair for things. So it's not a waste. Um, I what I tend to do is I've got core wool in just black and white, and I'll make the body of the animal in whatever those colours are. And then I'll just finish it with with the top. So I'll color color it in, and then do any long hair or anything with the tops because it's easier just to have a stash of all the colors of tops rather than have all the colors of tops and try and get all the colors in core wool as well. Um. Wendy, yeah, my first kit I got on Amazon only had merino. I had no idea about cool core wool for a while. Yeah, sadly, so many of these kits are just rubbish for getting people started. And I've got literally no idea why, because core wool is cheaper than top. So why are they giving you the expensive stuff to make a kit that's really horrible to use and off-putting? Why not give the good wool? I mean, that's that's what the makers are doing they're giving us the wool that we need for the project um so yeah i i totally don't care that it annoys me no end because it's just all these kit all these rubbish kits will just put people off i mean you you guys all know how i feel about putting polystyrene balls in kits that is not a shortcut that's just a horribleness just roll a ball of just 
roll, take some tops and tie it in a knot and you've got a ball pretty much you know if you don't know how to do anything else but oh, no don't don't put tops don't put polystyrene balls put the wool that a normal person who actually felt would use um <laughs> Alicia we get your sense of humor smile and cool hair oh thank you so much too kind um Bridget, um, me too as I'm a wet felter too. Pam has a video changing tops to bats. Yep, absolutely. Um, you, yeah, you can do that too. Um, certainly, yeah, if you're wanting to top dress a project, it's a bit easier. Um, I even just... I do have some tops here. Yeah, if you've got some tops that you were wanting to use that as a covering, I mean, you could just wrap like that, but it gives lines. I do have a video using brushes to card it but you can also just fluff the thing just pull it the fibers were running that way i just pulled it sideways and woohoo look i've made bats <laughs> um, it's not quite but it just makes an easier something to get a bit of a surface dressing on so totally you can you can use the tops but it, it's the kits that give them away in the first place you know it, it's fine to w I, I bet we've all got ridiculous stashes of far too much wool everywhere. Where have we got? We've got four legs. Um, the back paws are more... Oh, they're more like flat... I should have paid attention to the template. Okay, so... <laughs> here's how you change rounded paws into flat flippers. Just felting more in one place see the template see see you all got me distracted and talking <laughs> uh, okay back paw so i'm just holding it flat between my fingers and just curving it out a bit more um so it's it's easy at this kind of level to not to not be stuck to the shape you made you can change them a bit so we've got a bit more flat Yeah. Oh yeah, we do have a pocket here. <laughs> oh, fab fun. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I've got one back paw in a more flat shape. Another back paw in a more flat shape. And yeah, for the front paws, we're just making a little pocket area. <laughs> this is so cute. You guys are so cool. Um, Diana, not only too much wool, I've got a room full of all sorts of craft stuff. Only one room? Oh, you lightweight. Um, I know so many people that don't just have a craft room, it's taken over into many, many rooms. <laughs> Yes, it, it's a it's a terrible hobby. It really is. Uh, thankfully, I'm not too crafty at other things. I want to try other other stuff, but I know I'm not good at them, so I just don't get round to it. Okay, yes. Yeah, so there's a little flat area in these paws for its pocket. <laughs> it's a little armpit pocket. I'm so happy that you guys included that. That is so cute. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna make it perfectly, but we'll do that anyway. Okay. <laughs> oh, so cute. Okay, so we've got to felt this on, but leave leave a little bit loose there so they can tuck they can tuck their favourite stone in. <laughs> that is too adorable. Um, There's your pocket. <laughs> it's starting to look. Is that not looking adorable now? Um, Faith, you had to start vacuum sealing your wolf stash. You have, so you have more space. <laughs> Far too much stuff. That's a really good idea, though. I've wondered about that myself. Um, it would be a good way to tidy up some of the because they're. 
most of the space they take up is just air so to vacuum seal little little bits that you're not using that, yeah that's a good idea i might look at doing that myself um and where do you the little back legs super cute um wendy it was a beginner kit and didn't really have a project they had directions but they were bad yeah i've seen that i ended up looking up needle felting and found Serafina and then found me and a bunch of others oh thank you so much yeah Serafina is a great place to start also she is a wizard I've tried to felt along with her um, many a times and yeah I just have to pause and rewind and I'm just like how how did you do that in like four seconds three and a half stabs she goes we'll do a ghost and then a taco and then a this and then a that and now you have a fox and you're like what how, how did that just happen <laughs> all her random shapes just make make something that works it's very bizarre so I'm super happy you guys included an idea for the pocket <laughs> that is so much fun um when the yeah the biggest room in your house is your craft room yeah um i don't have a craft room well this this is my spare room i'm in it's not some kind of dingy basement it's actually my spare bedroom and we're sitting underneath the the, the bed in the spare room at the minute in time um so this room's got craft stuff all over it um and my kitchen and my sitting room has craft stuff all over it and i have a very small house so it's only my bedroom that doesn't yeah and the bathroom the bathroom has no craft stuff in it which you can say well of course your ba your bathroom doesn't have craft stuff in it well me mum <laughs> when i visit my mum who has a bigger house than me um she has a craft room and then she has another room with craft stuff in it and then she has her sitting room with craft stuff in it <laughs> and then even in the bathroom that i use there's a spinning wheel and a pile of wool in the corner of the bathroom because she's got nowhere else to keep it. <laughs> Here we go, little otter. Um, tail. That was this bit. Roll with a pointy end to the tail. Gotcha. Um. And Alicia, yes, it's not too late to get your own otter kit. Um, and yes, Diana, they do. They use they use their stones. They're n it's not just a toy. They use it to break open shells, and it's so cute to see that they put it on their belly and they smash, try and smash things into it. They're very adorable. Um, murderous. It's still still animals, but it's t super adorable. They are some of the cutest animals <laughs> I wonder I might just have to felt a tiny little rock for him to be smashing up also I think his little paws are too they are short anyway in an otter but I think I've made them too short to build a smash into his belly um <laughs> oh mum's saying not a spinning wheel in the bathroom have you moved it now it was in the bathroom You've just tidied up so you can make me out to be a liar. <laughs> but you'll you'll notice she didn't she didn't dispute any of the other things. Um <laughs> and the maker spelt sell storage. Of course you do. <laughs> um there are so many awesome crafty storage things out there. Um I I don't know if you guys have all seen the massive cabinets you can get that looks like a wardrobe but you just pull it and open it out and it's just like an entire crafty you've got a desk and all the drawers and all the crafty things all around it's so awesome um oh we're on to a new page <laughs> got a poppy's tail on I've just seen the pictures of the baby otter. That is so adorable. We will do the baby otter next week. 
um, and I will felt him firmly and everything. Um, but yeah, actually, this has come together. Simple, simple shapes, which is the best way to make things. Um, obviously, I would felt firmer, but this is what you can do in an hour. Um, <laughs> Alicia, mum just moved the spinning wheel right now. Yeah, she heard me say it. It was just like pulling it out. Going, I don't have a spinning wheel in my bathroom. What kind? What kind of strange person would have a spinning wheel in their bathroom? It's a very large bathroom, <laughs> by the way. Um, Gwen, OMG, so cute. Thank you so much. Um, mum, it's been in the living room for years. I don't remember. Oh, so is it has? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. You yes, it's over in the corner. It was in the bathroom, though. I'm not making that up. And there is a big, a massive heap of wool in the bathroom. Um, Alan back having problems with his nose. Oh, what what's the problem? And we'll see if we can troubleshoot the nose. Um, Wendy, I'd love that cabinet that opens up. I know, I don't actually think I've got room anywhere in my house for it, but it is amazing. Um, okay, let's, let's do, do the head some. Um, so yeah, just got to felt over and make sure everything's attached but give the head a slightly flatter shape by felting into the top and underneath the chin got you so we want him a little more pointy and then add a little wisp of the country sheep bat which was the country sheep um that was the little gray one um to soften the appearance of the glued in eyes. So the eyes seem to be quite far forwards, which is good because I don't think I put the white far enough back. Um, so we'll just blend in a little bit more black. Oh, white there, yeah, losing words. Um, yeah, so tiny bits of this color just to figure out where I'm gonna put my eyes, I think here. Yep, that looks like an ottery spot. And I'll just felt these a little bit, and then we've just got a yeah. Basically, after this, that would be whiskers, but I don't have any any needles for whiskers just now, so he won't have any whiskers. So yeah, it's just firming this guy up, bunging his eyes in, and we have an otter. That was super easy, guys, and he does look actually quite adorable. <laughs> I shouldn't sound surprised. The maker's kits always work. Um, right, let's see if we can get the eyes in. Sorry, guys, I know that looks awful. Literally, I don't... Guys, you saw I had the eye kit, the eye pack, and I just put it down there. How? How do I always lose these things? I haven't even stood up. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> oh, boy. Literally cannot move from my seat and lose the things that I need. And I don't have glue up here, so we won't glue them in. Oh, there is some whiskers here, in here as well. <laughs> but I didn't have bring any needles up the stairs with me. Um, oh, baby eyes too. They are so touchy. Do you even see that? They are so tiny. Better put them in there, or so we'll totally lose them. And put those two away. And put the whiskers away. Hold on. Don't have enough hands. Put the whiskers away. I don't know how you ladies managed to pack all of this. This is so cool. 
see i'm not managing to get the whiskers to go in but there we go that's good enough well, let's see if the eyes will fit in yes and it's adorable <laughs> Right, I'm going to felt over to just firm him up a little bit, but I think we we have got an otter done. <laughs> That's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. And he, or oh, I say he, she'll look so much better with her little otterly baby. I am. Um, Uh, Gwen, I started my next project. I'm making a Niffler, the creature that looks like a mole and likes shiny things from the ha Harry Potter universe. Whoops. Oh, I don't remember that. That sounds cool. We'll have to see that. Um, Helen Gore, I have my bedroom, but a big a big shed. Yep. Um, and yeah for the nose if you're wanting like, a little tip for doing these kind of noses I've shown you this I've shown this before right you're not seeing this sorry little guy <laughs> removed one nose um, so to get it's a diamond so I'll exaggerate the shape a bit more but a really simple trick for getting shapes is if I hold between my fingers like this focus camera there is a kind of diamond shape in the gap between my fingers I'm going to focus on the bottom and the two sides first so I'm felting just in the gap between my fingers and then felting up and I've got it's just magically when I'm really really careful here the gap between my fingers creates a diamond shape all to itself <laughs> if you can see and then just felt down, pull down each of the sides of the diamond and then felt in the inside bits and you've kind of got a super quick diamond. I hope that kind of made, made sense. And then you can just manipulate it a bit to make it look less obvious. And there's an diamond. Um, which needle am I using? That's the right one. Um, Carol going for the European otter reminds me of the ones I saw in the in the lochs in the Scottish Highlands. Oh, cool! Um, and you can use an owl, an owl, 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 owl. I don't know how you say it, but yeah, you can use a a stabby thing to make the holes to get the eyes to go in. But this, if it if you've not felted too firmly the eyes go in fairly well if you felted firmly just felt a whole lot in the same in the exact same place and you felt a tiny little tunnel the eyes can fit into um carol house brownies always move and hide stuff leave them some chocolates <laughs> Oh, you had to pull the nose off, Helen. It looks better now. Oh, yeah, sometimes things just don't look quite right and you've just got to play around with them some more. But as you just seen, I could pull the nose off no problem and make a new nose. Yeah. Oh, go on, it's in Fantastic Beasts and... Oh, cool, your, your little creature. <laughs> I haven't looked too much into Fantastic Beasts yet. <laughs> Alicia, she's tearing it apart again. She ripped an ear off a dog before. I know, I'm so evil. <laughs> Just demonstrating how easy it is to fix things. You know, you're not stuck with, if you don't like something that you've made, just I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna t pull your arm off. It's okay, little guy. <laughs> he was looking worried, but you can just 
rip bits off, cut bits off, add new bits in. They're they're not fixed. If you don't like how it looks, then change it. Um. Oh, Diana, thanks. And those trick is, is fab. Thank you. That's. I, I use the tools that I've got at hand, which are my hands. <laughs> um, I'm incredibly lazy for not getting up and using different tools. I've scissors, needles, and wool, and a bit of pipe cleaner, and some eyes. That's that's the limits of of what I use most of the time. If if I don't have to stand up and go and get other stuff, then I much prefer that when I'm felting. <laughs> Um, Gwen, you you use a sort of owl to make your tunnel for your eyes. Yeah, um, I know a lot of people do. You get them in kits and things. I've just never bought one. I've, I've never owned one, so I don't use them. And I've got a needle. Um, the thing with your needle is to be careful. You can stab right into something. Sorry, guy, but you've got to be the demo. You can stab right in, and if you're really careful, just kind of rotate your needle. But be careful; they don't they don't like bending as much. So a, an actual proper proper tool that's designed for the job will work better. But I don't like to have to get up and find other tools, so I just use what I've got. Nifflers are pretty cute. I'll have to look them up. <laughs> Helen. Oh, wow, a nose. Yeah. <laughs> Alicia, what amazes me is she never uses a mat and does it all in the air. It's not talent. It's just laziness. Um, Honestly, these projects are just so much easier because look at the length of my needle and look at the length of the project. So... I'm not getting near my hands just now. If you know, obviously be careful if you're doing littler things, but I just find it so much easier to be able to move about and get get wherever I want with a critter. Um so yeah. <laughs> it's just again, it was just lazy for me. I'm I'm sitting up at a table just now so you guys can see what I'm doing, but in general when I'm working I'm just kinda curled up on the sofa watching the tally. So I much prefer to, you know, not have to, you know, you can't sit on the sofa so much and use a, the felting cushion, so it's much better for me to just be able to sit like this, can can felt away with no trouble. Um, oh, Gwen, they're mole-like and normally have a black coat, their nose is flat like a platypus. Oh, cool. Sounds interesting. Gwen, you don't use a mat, a mat for parts of yours either. Yeah, I think hopefully when people started seeing me, I'd been doing this for much longer than before I'd started on YouTube. When people started seeing me, and still every now and again, I kind of get grief, like hate from people going, that's really unsafe. You shouldn't be teaching people to do that. It's like, well... Hopefully we're all adults, <laughs> so you're you're able to decide how you want to to felt these things. And for some people, felting in the air is going to be easier, like it is for me. And for other people, felting with a mat's going to be easier. But none of them are actually safer. You guys can you guys can see once you've once you've practiced for a bit and you've practiced talking to a camera and felting. Um, yeah, it, it just becomes easier. You get to know where your hands are in the world. And if you're doing it in front of a camera, you also learn how to like randomly stab yourself without showing it in your face. It's so much easier. <laughs> oh, Alicia, you can't watch TV without stabbing yourself. You can only listen to shows, you know. Yeah, it take, takes practice to be this lazy. <laughs> it's a skill in itself. But yeah, it just think because if you're doing needle felting as a part of your career a part of your income as well especially coming around christmas time you know it's like you go out you do your day job whatever your day job is and then you're looking to you know, do some felting at night I, I would feel if it was something that i had to sit down and really focus on then that becomes 
extra work it's hard whereas if I can just sit back and I would have been sitting watching the tally anyway so if I can sit and watch the tally and 90% of your time needle felting is this bit is the easy bit it's it's not making the shape it's just the final touches or the create you know you're just the firming up so this bit just takes time there's there's no skill level to this bit it, it's the getting it to this stage there is so you know if I can just do this and just sit relax watch a tv show then it doesn't feel like work whereas I'm still working but it's so much easier look at these little pockets <laughs> um but yeah so so that just works for me but yeah I can I can see if if this was my only job I suppose if I didn't felt sitting in a chair if I had to go to a studio space and sit down and say right this is my work time I'm only going to do this much work then that could be a good way to sort of divide up your day so you've you know when you've got time off but yeah I, I'm self-employed I don't have time off um um Gwen, I have a big flo foam block for my mat and hold it on my lap. Sometimes I do it both ways. Yeah, that works too. Absolutely. Um, CJ, don't use a mat for 99% of my creations. Yeah, I like, you, you guys have seen, I occasionally use a mat. So there's certain things, and especially it'd be impossible to do 2D felting without a mat, or, or will it? No, I'm not even going to try. Um, Gwen, I always stab myself at least once. You're not a needle felter if you couldn't grate garlic on the end of your finger just because of all the roughness on it. Uh, Wendy, sometimes I don't realise I stab myself until I see blood. <laughs> oh, I always know I've stabbed myself, but sometimes you're, you're like felting and going, right, I better be careful in case, you know, that that was an ouchy one. I wonder if that's if that's going to be, that's going to be a messy one. Keep your fingers away, but very thankfully very le rarely do I do that anymore but I always feel it <laughs> um Wendy you must be a tough cookie absolutely um and Gwen saying the same yep um oh Helen I'm felting on my bed have to be careful <laughs> bedtime and needles ouch yeah indeed don't definitely you don't want to break break a needle and have a wee bit fly about there um, Wendy, I have calluses. Yes, we we we're felters. We <laughs> we have to have. But I think yeah, see if you were a guitar player or something in 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 the past, then well, it depends which hand you use, I guess. But yeah, something like a guitar player or something before that you've you've already sort of hardened up your finger pads that'll make things easier um diana it's worse with white wool absolutely that's like always always give it a minute to make sure that you're not actually going to be bleeding onto your project um wh when you say blood sweat and tears it's it's really hopeful that that's <laughs> that's not literally meant okay i think i'm going to stop with him he's firming up actually fairly nice let's Let's go the camera. So this is kind of cute. She's kind of cute. I'm looking forward to getting the baby. Um, yeah, looking forward to getting the baby. We'll do that next week. So if anyone hasn't made their otter and wants to make one, you can follow along. Um, so the kit's still up for sale till the end of the month so you've got another week or so anyway to buy the kit um or practice with with what you've got but it sounds like we've got some exciting kits coming up anyway but yeah so we'll we'll make the baby together next week um i'm just going to check the chat for five minutes and then we'll be done i want to go and get my tea i'm starving um Gwen, I only stabbed myself that hard once at first when I made it bleed. I had so bad it had to be band aided up. Yeah. Oh ouch. Um I've seen some people do some really good injuries. In general, thankfully, most people don't, but it can happen. Um Alicia's attaching the back paws now. Awesome. Um <laughs> 
uh, Wendy saying I've had to pull wool off because the white wool was turning red. I don't know if you've seen there's a YouTuber called Threadbanger. Um and they're quite they're cool kind of crafty people. They have a bit of a dirty mouth if you're offended with that. I'm totally not. Um and they get a bit silly sometimes. But he decided one time that the guy in the partnership was going to try a needle felting kit and actually he did really well but there was a time when he all his projects he was like cutting himself and everything and we always it, it was generally looked like a total joke that you know it was fake blood but when he started felting it definitely wasn't fake blood and he was making this easter bunny and it said add a little blush to the cheeks <laughs> And I just used his stabbed fingers to do a bit of shading. I wouldn't recommend that, but I could see the temptation. But it actually looked really good. Um, Carol, so cute. Yes, I think this is a cool kit. This is this one's been fun and easy. Must make a start, absolutely. Um, Gwen may look for a kit and buy it. Yay! Um, Faith, you're most welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um... Yeah, Gwen, for the most part, it's just smaller pokes. Exactly. Hopefully that's... that. that, that may, may all your stabbings just be smaller pokes. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave you to it. Um, yeah, you have a great rest of your weekend. Have a great week, and I will hopefully see you in the next one. And keep an eye. If YouTube's not showing me showing your video showing my videos to you just keep an eye out check in sometimes please if you want to if you want to see what i'm wittering on about but yeah have a great day and i'll